Can you do a complete paperless flight preparation? In this video I'll show you how to use your Garmin Pilot app. Coming up next. Hi guys, I'm back again with a new Europilot Center tutorial. In my videos I'm handing you tools, tips and tricks used by professional pilots to make your flying safer and of course even more fun and enjoyable. And if you're new to the Europilot Center channel, don't forget to subscribe by clicking the button below. When it comes to flight preparation, I usually see three main problems. The first one is poor mental preparation. Let's face it, a good flight will start with a good preparation, because once you're in the air, everything goes pretty fast and it's very hard to catch up. In other words, mental preparation is key. The second one is not knowing where to find the right information. Knowing your sources and using the right sources is essential. The third one, missing a standard workflow, especially when using apps. So let's get started to be better mentally prepared, understanding your resources and of course developing a standardized workflow on your iPad. At Europilot Center we're using the Garmin Pilot app. The main reason is that it offers a flawless integration with our Garmin G1000 fleet. You can download the Garmin Pilot app for iOS and Android devices free of charge for one month by clicking the link in the comment section below. For all performance calculations we use Geronimo, the best app to calculate airplane performance using actual values from the official POH. You can download the app via the link in the comment section below. Oh, we love checklists! Now that we have our apps, let me show you our electronic pre-fly preparation checklist. For this, open the Garmin Pilot app, click home in the top left corner of the screen and tap on the checklist symbol. We have just downloaded our Europilot Center customized checklist binder revision 3. Just tap the binder to open it up. Highlight the pre-flight preparation checklist. Item number 1. Fit to fly. In my last video I covered how to determine if you're fit to fly with the I'm safe acronym. If you haven't seen it yet, make sure to watch my previous video on this topic. Today let's consider ourselves fit to fly and simply tick the box to complete this first item. Let's go to item number two, routing, and this is where the fun begins. Let's construct our route of flight. Hit home and hit the flight run button. On the left side of the screen, click add waypoint and type in the four letter ICAO code of the departure airport, KTRM. Next, simply tap on the Palm Springs airport in the list, which now appears. Confirm the Palm Springs Airport. A blue line has been drawn between your departure and destination airport. Let's say we first want to navigate to the PSP VOR. Pinch to zoom in on the PSP VOR, hold your finger on the blue track and move your finger to the PSP VOR. In the list which now appears, confirm the PSP VOR as your waypoint. At the bottom left corner of the screen, you can change your aircraft. Let's change it to November 153 Papa Charlie. Select the desired performance configuration, for example 2300 RPMs. Select your cruising altitude, since we're flying westbound, only even altitudes plus 500 feet for VFR are shown. Let's select 4500 feet. You can see the highest point along the route. Leave the initial fuel and cruise burn rates for what they are and change your departure time Next hit Create Trip. This will create an upcoming trip in your trip planning page. Now before we continue, click home and select the map again. Click the white arrow on the right side of the screen, click the symbol above the arrow and select Flight Profile from the list. This will show you a vertical profile including terrain and airspace. Clicking within the airspace boundary will highlight the area and more information is shown about the type of airspace, floors and tops. The green line shows you the planned cruising altitude. This can be adjusted simply by touching and holding the green line and sliding it up and down. Note that the colors of the terrain tops will change. 
Yellow indicates that you will cross a terrain feature such as a mountain peak within 100 to 1000 feet below the airplane's altitude. You want to stay at least 2000 feet from any terrain feature when operating in a mountainous area. Note that you can zoom in on the vertical profile by pinching as well. The area viewed will be shown in grey on the standard map. The highest point will be shown on top of the profile view and the minimum terrain clearance will be shown next to it. Let's finish the routing details by clicking home and selecting the trip planning button. This will show us the trip planning page. Select the pilot in command. Click filing information. Select Lidos flight service when operating in the USA and hit back. Select flight rules, VFR. Verify the correct aircraft has been selected. Leave the call sign blank. Check departure aerodrome. Adjust the departure date and time if required and check the destination aerodrome. Check routing. In this case, one waypoint via the PSP VOR. Check cruising altitude 4500 feet and finally adjust the RPM if required. Now let's go back to our pre-flight checklist and finish item 2, the routing. Step 3 is fuel calculations. Click home, go to the trip planning page, scroll down to the fuel planner and click the blue text. The fuel planner will open up. Scroll down to the section called in-flight. The trip fuel required for startup at thermal, taxi, climb, cruise, descent and landing and shutdown at Palm Springs is mentioned as 4.4 US gallons, about 15 minutes. Obviously it would not be safe nor legal to fly with only 4.4 US gallons on board and therefore the law requires you to add at least 30 minutes on final reserve fuel and 45 minutes for every VFR flight at night. When operating the Skyhawk we highly recommend to maintain a final reserve of at least 10 US gallons as operating with less than 5 US gallons in a tank will trigger a low fuel warning. To calculate this, under the pre-flight section hit planned takeoff fuel. Under quick set fuel select 30 minutes reserve. The planned takeoff fuel will now show you what the absolute legal minimum required fuel will be. In this case 8 US gallons. Let's check in our online planning system how much fuel the previous pilot left on board. We find that we have about 33 US gallons available, so let's change our plan takeoff fuel back to what we expect to have on board, in this case 33 US gallons. We know we will have 28.6 gallons upon landing, giving us 3 hours and 57 minutes extra fuel on board. Note that when not departing with a full tank, always visually check the fuel quantity by using a fuel dripstick. Never accept a verbal or even written statement from another pilot and never rely on the fuel gauges alone. Now let's go back to our pre-flight checklist and finish item 3, the fuel calculation. Item 4, navigation log and charts. Time to copy all this information to our Europilot Center navigation log, also known as an operational flight plan. On the bottom of the trip planning page, click Navlog. You can change the fields of the electronic Navlog as required. Now copy the calculated magnetic course, altitude, wind direction and speed, magnetic heading, ground speed, leg distance, etc. onto your operational flight plan. This is a good time to ensure you have studied your charts. If the goal of your flight is to conduct a full VFR dead reckoning exercise purely based on time and heading, make sure to plot your route including 10 degrees drift lines and 2 minute time ticks onto your sectional chart. Also study your airport plates by hitting the home button. Hit map, hold your finger somewhere on the map until the round radial menu shows up. Move your finger on top of your departure airport, hit the airport symbol and hit the information symbol in the top right corner. Now you can study the taxi chart, chart supplement and get information on frequencies, runways, procedures, FBOs, etc. One small side note, Garmin Pilot will automatically collect all required VFR and IFR charts based on your trip planning. Simply hit the home button followed by hitting the charts button and all official charts for your departure and destination airport will be collected here. When everything on the navigation log has been completed, you have prepared your sectional chart and you have studied all relevant airport data. Go back to the pre-flight preparation checklist and tick the box to complete item number 4, the navigation log and charts. Item 5, weather and NODAMs. What do you have to check as a pilot? Well, legally, you'll have to be aware about anything which may affect your flight. 
A combination of actual weather reports and forecasts called METARs and TAFs should indicate that one hour prior to your flight, during your whole flight and one hour after your flight, both visibility and cloud ceiling must be at or above the visual meteorological conditions VMC, and the wind is within the applicable limitations if any. Depending on the type of airspace you're operating in, there will be different VMC requirements. Another thing, we have to check if there are any flight restrictions in the Notice to Airmen called NOTAMs. You can consider NOTAMs as the pilot's newspaper. This all sounds pretty complicated, but in fact it isn't. Let's hit home again, select trip planning. On the bottom of the trip planning page, click brief. Garmin Pilot will search all relevant weather and NOTAMs for your trip and display them in an easy to read format. Simply hit the terminal weather tab and it will show you the METARs and TAFs. You can check severe weather segments, air mats, central weather advisories, METARs, pilot reports, terminal forecasts, or TAFs, winds aloft, NOTAMs, temporary flight restrictions or TFRs, etc. Once you have briefed yourself and you are entirely satisfied, your flight can be performed safely under the conditions required. Tick the box on the pre-flight preparation checklist to complete item number 5, weather and NOTAMs. Next on our list is item number 6, mass and balance. In order to determine if the airplane will be loaded within the mass and center of gravity limitations, we need to perform a mass and balance calculation. So how do we calculate this? Click home, trip planning and click mass and balance on the lower right corner. Click edit load sheet on the top right corner. Ensure the correct airplane has been selected. This will be important as every airplane has a different empty mass and moment. Let's add ourselves to the front seat, assuming that I have a weight of 80 kilograms. Let's add a front passenger of 100 kilograms to the back seat and add a flight case of 10 kilograms in baggage area one. Fuel tanks were already set at 33 US gallons previously, so let's not touch those. When ready, let's check the summary on the right side. A statement, November 153 Papa Charlie loaded with an envelope, is visible. Takeoff mass 1057.1 kg is checked, landing mass 1051.2 is checked. Let's check if the airplane has been loaded within the center of gravity limits by visually checking the CG envelope and moment envelope and of course the section chart. Now click email load sheet and send a copy to your pilot center of operations and yourself in order to show evidence of having performed mass and balance calculations. Hit done in the upper right corner, hit home, checklist and finish item 6, mass and balance. Item 7, let's calculate the performance. For this we use the Geronimo app and your takeoff and landing data card. Open the app and hit the takeoff tab. Set the aircraft takeoff mass 1057 kilograms. Set the takeoff elevation, the outside air temperature, altimeter setting, runway conditions and headwind components if any. In the summary on the right, you'll find the calculated takeoff roll and calculated takeoff distance. As we're no test pilots, it's recommended to add 30% safety margin to the calculated takeoff distance. In this case, 1844.7. Write this figure down on your takeoff data card under takeoff distance required. The takeoff distance available should be equal to or more than the calculated takeoff distance required. Now let's calculate the landing distance. Tap on the landing tab. Set the landing elevation, the outside air temperature, the altimeter setting, runway conditions and headwind or tailwind components if any. In the summary on the right you'll find the landing roll of 601 feet and the landing distance of 1345 feet. Add the safety margin of 43% and write this figure of 1923.4 down on your landing data card under landing distance required. The landing distance available should be equal to or more than the calculated landing distance required. Hit home, checklists and finish item 7, performance. Item 8, ATC flight plan. If your local regulations require you to file an ATC flight plan, this would be a good time. Simply hit home, trip planning and hit file. This will automatically file your flight plan. You even have the choice to cancel or amend your filed flight plan. Remember, don't forget to close your flight plan after you have arrived at your destination. Tick the box to complete item 8, ATC flight plan. 
9. Pilot documents. As a pilot, you should have the following documents on board. Your pilot license, pilot certificate or student pilot certificate if applicable. Your medical. Your logbook if it's required by law to have logbook endorsements with you for solo flights. Or a solo authorization form under EASA. Also, don't forget your spare glasses. They may be required due to restriction on your medical certificate. 10. Aircraft documents. You probably have heard about the ARO acronym. ARO stands for Airworthiness, Registration, Operating Limitations and Weight and Balance. So make sure you have a current Airworthiness certificate on board. Make sure you have a current registration certificate on board. Operating limitations, make sure you have your current airplane flight manual on board. And last but not least, make sure you have your current weight and balance documentation on board as well. This may be in an electronic format such as the email previously sent. 11. Trouble report. Always check the aircraft trouble report for open squawks or problems reported by other pilots. So let's check our online squawk system for any discrepancies. If there is any discrepancy, check the kind of operations equipment list. If you can dispatch the airplane with an inoperative item, make sure the item is properly placarded and any unintentional use prevented by a maintenance action performed by an authorized mechanic. Remember, you are not supposed to pull any circuit breaker. 12. Dispatch Simply execute the correct actions to dispatch the flight on the online planning system. This will include verification of current hops and tackle times and maintenance status. Flight notification. When flying out of a European airport, it may be required to notify the airport authorities about certain flight details. You should do this by informing them about a few items, such as your airplane registration, the nature of the flight being VFR or IFR, the name of the student, the name of the instructor and the amount of passengers on board. Hey, didn't we finish our complete pre-flight preparation in a quick and easy to follow workflow? You will absolutely find yourself much better mentally prepared on your next flight. Oh, and one small thing. Did you know that Garmin Pilot contains a cool feature whereby all your Europilot Center manuals, POHs, documents, a checklist, etc. are fully synchronized with our servers? Simply hit home, documents, Dropbox and you have access to all important training materials necessary to make your training even more fun and enjoyable. Thank you so much for watching again. I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to subscribe and as always, join our personal training in style.